Good morning, friends. This is Rising Signs. Maddie, who is our guest today? All the way from Quebec, Canada, we got the professor of signs himself, Robert Blythe. Amazing. Brian, roll that intro. Roll it! Season 1, episode 12. Let's go, baby! Woo! Rising Signs. Good morning, friends. Welcome to episode 12, the end of season one. I'm Joe. And as always with me, it's Matthew Lavery. Matthew (laughs) Lavery. Welcome to episode 12, Matty Cakes. How are you holding up? Big number 12. Uh, You know what? Pretty good. Yesterday, quick story. uh, Yesterday I was eating dinner. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I guess uh, it's official. I definitely am getting old because my bones are starting to get brittle. So I was eating dinner. (laughs) And I felt a sensation and I'm like, are you kidding me? And I looked in the mirror and I cracked one of my molars. Whoa, like to the whoa. point where like a piece of my tooth fell off and I could see inside my tooth. And I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? So yesterday, uh, first thing in the morning, I called the dentist. I let them know. They rushed me in. They cleaned that thing up. They capped it. Canadian healthcare system cost me $91. And now I'm back, baby. Man, um, I cannot say that I have ever cracked a tooth ever in my life. But I can tell you a, a really dynamic dental story. Um, oh. So I had uh, all but one of my wisdom teeth removed when I was younger. And at one point, the, they said, oh, you've only got two. And then other ones kept showing up, right? So I had one that was bothering me for years And I finally, I was on like a five hour drive home and I got frustrated enough that I said, you know what, I'm going to take care of this. And there was something, it was an ad on one of the roads and it said, you know, hey, free x-rays, which if they're going to take out a wisdom tooth, they won't do it without doing x-rays. So I said, oh man, sweet. So I I literally called them and said, hey, I'm going to, I can be there in an hour and a half. You guys got an opening. I, I, on a whim, I got a dentist appointment. I showed up. In less than 45 minutes, I was in x-rays. Dude, like, it felt like he was, like, they numbed me up good, so it didn't hurt. Oh, yeah. It just, felt, it just felt like they just pried the bad boy out, and I was just gone, and I was on my way, and I even had chili for dinner. <laughs> it was all spi- it was spicy. And I, we had that plan before, but it was just amazing. I was like, oh, man. And it was, like, it was, it was super cheap as well, so that was awesome. It worked out really well. Kudos. Kudos to all the dentists and the doctors out there. I walk into that place and I just feel out of my element. It's uh, the the work that they do and the timely fashion that they do it in. I mean, it takes a special person. So God bless them. Absolutely. Who wants to be inside other people's mouths? Nobody. Nobody. Right? Nobody. Right, we, we have uh, an exciting uh, yes. guest that is uh, – for the small conversation that I've had so far, I think our brains are, are wired very, very similarly. So I think you're going to get your chops busted a lot on this episode, Matt. I hope you're, I hope you're prepared for that. So Whatever. this is the part of the show where uh, the lights, the spotlight goes on to Matt. And we end up with uh, a phenomenal uh, f- boxing fight night worthy introduction. Love it. Where, where's the mic UFC. that comes down from the ceiling? Where's the mic that comes down from the ce- ceiling for you? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and in this corner, you ready? You want to get right into this right away? Uh, I think so. Joe, S- season one, episode 12, the end of season one. Let's bring in this guest. Brian, cue those lights. Our next guest is absolutely no stranger. In fact, we have uh, yet another legacy member to both the ISA and the SAC. 
He has graduated from McGill University. He is bilingual and he speaks both French and English. And he is currently in Quebec, Canada. He sits as the Quebec res representative at the Sign Association of Canada, as well as the secretary treasurer for a key. Our next guest is a Scotsman and he loves the Scotch, although he isn't a fan of the traditional haggis. He has a podcast with a dear friend of mine, Lee, and it's called Chandler Letters and Coffee. So oh I God. suggest you go and check that out as well. When he isn't training for the Tour de France with his team Bianchi Bicycles, you will probably <laughs> find him on a computer doing more research on his course, LED 101, which I've heard from a few friends can be quite entertaining. This next guest has the lightest toes of any industry member. And if you're familiar with the show, Dancing with the Stars, then we have quite the episode for you today. Light on his feet, our next guest, the, the photographer of all things signs, the master of the mic, the McDuff himself, Mr. Robert Blythe. Whew. Welcome to the show, Robert Blythe. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you right now, I'm gonna kill that other guy. <laughs> I don't know where you got your information from. Uh, it's not one person, eh? Google, well, Bob, Google. There's a lot about you on Google. Oh, no. I didn't want to bring oh. up some of the other stuff I found either, eh? Oh, or the yeah, pictures. Well, you know. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. This is actually Welcome. spectacular. I, I've I've watched five episodes of what you guys do with Ian and Morgan and Matt and Lori and, and Matt De, De Salvatore, and I thought, uh, this, is, this is really a different format, and uh it's it's a lot of fun and i'm looking forward to uh being in the hot seat for the first time i you know as you mentioned earlier at channel letters and coffee uh something i do with lee and uh i'm usually sitting over there and now i'm sitting here and it's like yeah okay it's uh, it's it's warm <laughs> hot seat. don't worry matt Matt's the only one that's in the hot seat ever on this show, so don't worry about it. I, I, I love Matt like a like a like a, my own son, and uh, he's I'm, Thanks, I'm, I'm 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 lucky he's part of my life. So, all right, before we move on to uh, talking about sign related things, uh, I already learned something in the introduction that you're a Scotsman, uh, and and you appreciate Scotch, right? So, I, I got I'm 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 a Scotch fan myself, so I I want to hear what your favorites are. Oh, I, you know what? I go, I go from everything from light and floral to heavy and peaty. Uh, I can go very easily from the standard Glen Levitt right over to the Lagavulin, and uh, you know, very few people go to that extreme. But uh, if you're if you've had a heavy meal and you want something that's going to help you digest it, go right to the Lagavulin. Um, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, there's that famous saying: it's like a depth charge. You, once it goes down, it just goes boom. You know, and yeah. it just it just feels good. Um, but it's I down. love it. I, yeah. I so I I uh, I used to be more of a fan of red wine, right? And uh, really, what I'm looking to achieve is just that that warm, fuzzy yeah. feeling. Or just right there, uh, I can accomplish that faster with scotch. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not I, uh, to be the objective. But anyway. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> I, listen, it is my objective. I just, if I'm just putting it out there, that's my objective. There you and, go. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I would say that I'm uh, not as cultured a scotch drinker uh, as it sounds like you are. But because, um, like, I drink Lagavulin 16 and it tastes like I'm eating a hamster's cage. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's a great exit. A hamster's cage, eh? Yeah, that right? doesn't sound appetizing. I'm not gonna lie. Bottom of a hamster's cage. That's that's put put a pile of that in your mouth, Oof. light it on fire. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So I got um. I I would say my favorite right now is uh, a Glen Fittage 14 year, and it's my favorite. Now it aged in um bourbon and rum barrels. And oh my goodness gracious! It yeah, is some of them. The, well, some of the things they're doing is, uh, you know, I've been back to Scotland twice and been to many of the the, uh, the, the distilleries, and uh, I love going. I love going to Oban. I love going to uh, Abelour. I've been to uh, Glenmorey. Um, one of my wow. favorite, one of my personal favorites is the uh, Auchentoshan. You know, the name that's like this long sort of thing on the bottle. 
but no, it, I don't know. It's it's not it's not an expensive one, uh, and that's that that's the trick. You you don't need to spend a whole lot of money to get good wines, good yeah, uh, good scotch. You know, you don't need to. So yeah, agreed. But, uh, yeah, look for Akintoshan and uh, try that twelve year old basic. Really good, really easy. Let me make well, a note here. Now yeah, that we I have by uh, that one down, I can't you know, Google that one and find out. <laughs> I'm just going to sound it out uh, phonetically. Guys, now that we have pretty much every one of our viewers uh, Googling uh, different types of uh, scotch, uh, in the meantime, Rob, Love do me it. a favor for all those um, in the U.S. and all those uh, who I, I bet is uh, not that many in Canada who don't know who you are, um, give us a quick little uh, sales pitch on who you are. Oh, uh, well, I, I started in the sign industry roughly on the sides of it in 1998, uh, working for an aluminum transformation company where I had, I had shares in that company. And uh, I built 38 over-the-road cabinets uh, for the Dactronics VMS variable message signs where you're, you're driving down the road, detour, uh-huh. and so on and so forth. Um, and they're all around Quebec right now. So everywhere I drive, I get to see uh, my own work. Um, I had a couple of patents in structural engineering, which, uh, have really, it's not the cure for cancer, but when you, you know, when you get something that that's special, uh, it, it's pretty phenomenal. So I sold my shares and I had a non-compete in the aluminum industry, but, uh, Dactronics called me up and said, Hey, you, you interested in, in doing something? And I said, yeah. And I started with Dactronics and I was there for about nine years. Um, uh, after the recession hit in, uh, in 2008, 2009, uh, I ended up with Optech, and uh, I loved Optech. Optech was a phenomenal company, a lot of fun to work for, uh, very inspiring people, uh, great customer service, and so on and so forth. Um, and then I uh, did a stint with uh, Media Resources, helping them out with uh, their okay. their getting uh, getting more known here in Quebec, and so on and so forth. But it really wasn't for me. Uh, I got an offer from Patterson to become the director of digital signage for Patterson. Uh, wow. I went over to China. They sent me over to China, and we, we built a, a digital line. Uh, now they're selling right to their customers. And uh, But I, mm. unfortunately, I got downsized. At the age of 55, I was out looking for a job and uh, ended up with a, a little company called Numax. And it was fantastic because I live here, and Numax was six minutes away, uh, literally, from my front door. And it was a small boutique company. Uh, I enjoyed it, uh, but... Two or three weeks ago, they said to me, we're not going to make it through the uh, coronavirus and we need to restructure, we need to refinance, and we need to resize. And so uh, here I am enjoying life. I'm riding, riding my bike. Um, Good for you. Uh, I love to teach about, uh, I love to talk about uh, LEDs. Uh, I can mm-hmm. talk from now till tomorrow about LED. Uh, the guys at Rain, that Optech used to call me Rain Man because I was uh, so specifically uh, uh, involved in understanding how LED displays work and what the what the reasons are behind them. Uh, that I, I I sometimes get a little bit in my own bubble, and from there I uh, I just uh, love talking about it. So that's my world of signage. And, uh, you know, coming from the engineering side of things, uh, where we were dealing with volumes and volumes and volumes of rules and regulations for over the road for the DOTs and the MTOs and so on and so forth, ministry mm-hmm. of transportations, uh, getting into the world of artistry was a hard thing for me. And artists would say, well, we want to put round pegs and square holes. Well, you can't do that. Well, we, yeah, we're going to do it. You figure it out. And the, the challenges that I came up against in, in the last 20 years of my signing industry here has just been phenomenal. So I get to meet a ton of people. I have connections all across Canada and a lot in the U.S. Uh, and now what I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying talking to the young people. I'm, I'm enjoying watching guys like Matt Lavery uh, and Lee Murphy and uh, uh, Taylor. Joe and- Lupton. In Joel up <laughs> all, all, all the young people that uh, I wish I had a mentor for mm-hmm. uh, when I was your age, and um, unfortunately, it didn't happen. But I, I'm not going to let that mistake run by. I'm going to make sure that I can do what I can. Hey, Matt, well, he might not have mentioned me because maybe I, I don't qualify for the uh, for the young people card. Maybe that's yeah. Okay, you're not that much older than me. What are you talking about? I'm going on 36. I'm not exactly a spring chicken anymore, eh? Well, I'm 34, but 
you look extravagantly younger than I do. Wow. And my my <laughs> nonna my nonna used to my nonna used to say we're Italian. Uh, in Italian culture, usually you use an old chicken to make soup, so they call that a gallina. So I would be considered an old chicken, and so I would get used to make uh, chicken broth. But uh, that's nor here nor there, Rob. From what you said, uh, the one thing that I want to I want to mention is uh, with a guy like you. Your rap sheet, uh, what you're capable of and what you've done for the industry, change is always a good thing. And I've learned yeah. that this year more so than ever, that sometimes that we're throwing these cards, um, yeah. that is, it's, it's life-changing, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a negative thing. Um, yeah. God works in mysterious ways. For all you know and for all I know, it's going to lead you down a different path. Uh, yep. And with all the successes you have and uh, the impact and the influence that you've had on the industry, uh, I think it's uh, it's it's a no-brainer that it, you're going to transition to something else. And I think everybody is looking forward to what that's going to be. So, uh, you know, it's... I uh, wanted to thank you. Well, thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate that. That's that's wonderful. Um, and I think, you know what, it's it's an adventure now. It's not, it's not, a, it's not, I'm not anxious about it. I, I don't, you know, I have no mortgage. I live very, very cheap. I have no mortgage. I have no car payment. I have no, no, thank God I don't even have a bike payment. Uh, but I, I got nothing to worry about financially sort of thing. Uh, but most importantly, uh, it, it's where's the next adventure coming from? And I'm on a life yeah. adventure and I just love that, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, bring it on. I'm ready, you know? Well, uh, you 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 dipped into one of the subjects we definitely wanted to pick your brain on, and and that was your experience uh, in the LED realm. Um, something that I have seen kind of a wave of, and I would really love to hear uh, your opinion. Um, it seems like the direct inline package displays are all but disappearing. It seems like most of everything that's coming out is S and D. I feel there's still some some dip stuff that's happening. Um, do you think that that the dip package is going to completely die? And do you see us moving forward from SMD even further to something I don't even know about at this point when it comes to message centers? <laughs> you know, the, 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 well, great question, Joe. And I think there's a there's a, there's long and short answers, and I'm going to try to keep the, the short answer. I hope that the DIP doesn't go away because the 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 inline uh, LED is so powerful and so uh, well used. And I mean, in the traffic world where you're talking um, large displays, in the billboard world where you're talking large displays, mm -hmm. the billboard world doesn't need wide viewing angle. They need brightness. They need power. They need, you know, and the SMD yeah. isn't giving them. It's not there yet. Okay. Uh, and I did some consulting work just recently for a project in the States in out of, near Chicago. Uh, and it, the choice was, do I use a 10 millimeter SMD or do I use a 16 millimeter DIP? Well, the display is 36 feet tall by 60 feet wide. Think about that yeah. for a second. That's, I mean, you're going to be looking at that display from the next state, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Do you really need to go to a 10 millimeter SMD? No, no, not at all. So right. why? So my thing with the the whole answer of uh, where is this going is let's provide the customer with the right product for the application and not the product mm -hmm. salesperson wants to sell for the application. And through math, I can teach that, and, and I've developed this 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 mathematical sequence which basically shows the customer at this distance, at this pixel pitch, at this height, uh, you're going to get this much viewing and so on and so forth. And, and really where it stands is I feel that there's a push towards tighter and tighter pixel pitch because that's what's coming out of China. That's yeah. what, that's what you know, we're being flooded with. And I think that now um, when, you, when you look at this and you say, hey, you know what? Uh, we don't necessarily need to go there. And I, I wrote an article mm -hmm. that appeared in Sign Media many years ago. Is a 20 millimeter pixel pitch better than a 10 millimeter? And I took a lot of flack for it. But the thing is, for I said, if there, there's a budget, and back then it was $70,000 for a 10 millimeter pixel pitch, I proved that a 20 millimeter will be a lot better because it's the size, the physical size of the display. 
you're yeah. going to get a physical size. Now there is a convergence of pricing. There's a convergence of pixels. There's a there's there's a lot of that going on in the industry right now. Where it's going, I'm sure there are new products and new new manufacturing methods that are going to bring us new you know new ideas. And I saw a lot of them over in China. I saw I saw a product in China which is a DIP SMD. That was hard to believe, but it was literally a DIP SMD. And wow. Went, wow, yeah, yeah, pretty wow product. So, uh, Rob, this course LED 101 is that something that you put together yourself? It, it is, uh, Matt. And the reason I did that is because, as I said in the intro, being an engineer, um, I would sit and listen to all the marketing people talk about why wow, this and mm. that and everything else and under the sun, and because you need to do this. And I, I after that presentation, I'd walk over to the engineer's desk and say, okay. Tell me what. Tell me how this works. Tell me exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and what I had an ability to do was convert the engineering language into layman's language, where the customer now could understand why pixel pitch in relation to physical size, in relation to viewing distance. Um, they could understand what a knit was and so on and so forth. And uh, it became important to share and teach that knowledge. And I think yeah. many of the customers I've had come along and said to me, you know, you're just not a salesman. I, in fact, I'm a terrible salesman, but I am professor. a sniper. Yeah, yeah, I'm a professor. You are. You're a sign professor. Uh, yep. I'm a sign professor. and I, I love I, it. But but a lot of customers say you come with value. You teach mm -hmm. the why yes. and not the because. Mm -hmm. And when you understand, you know, how to drive a car and what the brakes do, then you can actually drive that car better. And, mm -hmm. and, and I relate everything back to that. It's not because you have a Ferrari, you have to drive it at 200 miles an hour. It's not because your display does 38, 40 uh, hertz refresh that you're going to get there. And there's a whole yeah. lot of reasons why. I mean, I have access now to, I'm going to tell you something really boring, and, but exciting for me. I have access to MacroBlock, um, the IC chip for the drivers, for the LED, for their, their white papers. And I read all their white papers about how their drivers work. And any salesman that comes to you and says, our displays do 38, 40 hertz, that's, that's crap. It's not true. And I have the white papers to prove that. They can do up to based on certain uh, parameters, but those parameters aren't, aren't always met. And it's yeah. how to tell the truth. And when you sign your name to a drawing and that bridge falls and a thousand people die, yeah, you need to tell the truth. <clears throat> yeah, Our, you you've touched on three things that I I, I really really love. Uh, I'm I'm excited for how connected our brains are. So I I'm in sales. I, I like to think that I'm good at sales, but um, and I've grown a lot over the years. But you know when I started, everything I did was very technical. It's 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 what I attached to, and it was how I helped people build signs better, faster, more efficiently. Um, and I've had to learn, uh, you know, the Kirby vacuum side of it and, and grow myself to become, a, I, I think there's a place for both of those things. So one thing I think is funny that you touched on is, and we can relate to everyone who isn't as intimately connected with message centers is we see things like 8k coming out on TVs now. And I it's know. really interesting that you can say, listen, um, your eye is not capable of perceiving what is being produced on this television. And it's the same concept that we get with messages. Like, sure, you could buy a, a eight millimeter, a 10 millimeter, but if your viewing distance is X number of feet away, it's not going to be any different than if it was a 16 millimeter. But the problem is when it comes to education in the sign industry, and my, let me, let me step back. My opinion is yeah. that when it comes to information and education in the sign industry, someone at a sign company often builds a relationship and reacts to the passion of somebody mm -hmm. regardless of fact checking them. And that's yeah. where we run into these things like refresh rate. And it, we're a very, re, I think we're dialed back when it comes to technology, when it comes to education, you know, we're 15, 20 years behind the ball compared to many other industries. But we're also reactive to the availability of things. So when we talked about what's coming from overseas when it comes to message centers, um, all of a sudden there was this influx of 10 millimeters. Uh, everybody was just buying those because yeah. the price point was so low because it, I guess it's just more efficient 
for the factories overseas to make these now uh, as opposed to like the dip. Right? But that's part of the thing is and why you take so much flack is because people just invent a sales pitch and yeah. it works and then yeah. people hear it and they duplicate it and they duplicate it. But in fact, there's no truth behind that pitch at all. Right? No, exactly. And I, I call that snake oil salesman. And that's why snake I go in and I, de I debunk those truths. I built up a, a slide presentation of 90 slides uh, based on uh, 15, 16 years of my life and, um, and why that exists. It, Joe, you mentioned uh, 8K. I'm going to ask you one single question. Why was 4K invented? Why was 4K accepted? Ooh. I don't know. Okay. Well, look at tri trivia time. Tri is trivia? Ready. Is this a trivia question? <laughs> this is a trivia question. Oh, I Switched it up, eh? The you guess are, is yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I have no clue. What is the reason? Okay, well, um, I'm 55 years old, and I remember black and white TV. I remember watching TV on a 19-inch, 20 feet from the TV on a sofa, going like, you know, like this. The 1800s, I became, right? As I became 30 years old, my TV became a 30-inch, 600-pound Sony or whatever it was. Oh, and yeah. I was 45. I got a 46-inch high definition, 1,080 yeah. pixels high. Now, but my couch never changed mm. places. I've always yeah. been 12 feet away. Now we have 65-inch. Now I can actually see the dots of a high definition TV. So what do we do? We put 4K in there. Now we put four dots in because now people are saying, but my image looks terrible. It's because your screen is too big. It's just because <laughs> your screen is too big. That's why 8K is coming because there are screens that are going to be a hundred inches. They will, uh -huh. they're coming. So now so you put those 8K in there. You know, we had we had widescreen solutions that didn't have that issue. They were just too heavy. I had a I had a uh, sixty inch plasma. Plasma. Uh, oh my god, that was beautiful. Plasma. But God, I think the thing weighed one hundred and seventy five pounds. It was a monster. But when we moved to LED and all that, you're I, that's a great explanation. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, your 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 chair never got further and further back from the TV, right? Your chair. Oh, like how he did that. So yeah. I mean, and all of a sudden now you can start seeing the pixels. Well, what do we do? We put four more in there. Four like K. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't even know I that they either. were coming out with that either. No. No, there's eight K now, but I mean, yeah, I, yeah, and produce content for eight K, and then you know everyone thinks that they're getting four K coming in through their their cable provider, which is not true. They're getting no. 4K. Because yeah. the, I had, the tube is that big. I mean, how can you get that much information through a tube? To everyone? I was uh, young and naive, and I didn't know. Uh, once upon a time, I bought that GoPro Black Hero, <clears throat> and it recorded in 4K. So yeah. we went on vacation, and I took everything in 4K. I came home. I loaded it on my laptop to realize that my laptop wasn't 4k compatible and it wouldn't even load any of the footage so i went to my other computer and that thing was in 4k and then i went to my tv and used the sd card slot and it was a 4k so i couldn't even view any of the footage because my technology was so far behind so yeah and you know and you know how big those files were probably huge, huge right huge yeah. huge mm -hmm. your laptop would be smoking now you know uh oh, so that was probably another reason. So, you know, technology can always change, but unless we're adapting and we're keeping up with that technology as an industry, we're always yeah. going to be outdated. So, uh, I, I that's think awesome. that's, that's interesting. My, my opinion is we have to put more thought into engineering the right solution oh, versus yes. reacting to the available materials in the market. Oh, so much of where we are today is reactive. To what has been commonly produced for other industries. That's right. And we we've been the overstock consumption, and we've you know re re-engineered existing stuff versus looking at a solution and saying, yeah. how do we do this best? Yeah. And that's a it's a big issue. It's something that you know. It's huge, you know. So. And we 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 have taught people like, that have been in my position have taught poor information to fabricators because we mm -hmm. were given poor information. And as you grow in, in wisdom and, and learn some fundamentals and step back and think about things, you, 
Hmm. You know, LED with cabinets and channel letters is a, is a big thing where like the judging point for an LED module for those applications was that they wanted the most lumens ever. The yeah. most, that was how everyone mm. looked at it. And, you know, now we're at a place where, you know, 150, 160 lumens per foot on a module is really the sweet spot. But things got up to 400, 500 lumens per foot. And people were eating it up. And then I sold more dimmers than I've ever sold in my entire yeah. life because yep. none of the city municipalities would let them have right. <laughs> their sock nope. have right. No, nope, exactly. Right. Yeah, but it so. was reactive. We taught them, hey, they, a salesman would come in and say, no, guess what? Mine's 225 lumens per foot. And, oh, that's better. We got, we got to go with that, right? We, that's, that's the one we're going with. Because it's yeah. brighter. That was the measuring stick, which is wrong. There's you, an appropriate you, output. Well, you, you you talk about city bylaws. I was on the uh, government relations committees for about nine years uh, with the Sign Association of Canada, and uh, I rewrote the um, the handbook on EMC use and EMC bylaws and and best practices that now is distributed through SAC A Sign Association. And one of the my things is in the city of Mississauga. Um, you might yeah. know this, Matt. Uh, yeah. Goreway Drive, Westwood Mall, I think it's called. Okay. There's a there's a big display that was put up there, and 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 the city of Mississauga said uh, no to the display. I mean, the display's a monster. It's maybe 19, 14 feet high by nineteen feet wide, right above the door, and uh, they said no because it's within three hundred feet of the residential area. Mm -hmm. Right across the street was his residence. So what I did was I got onto Google. We went for the variance, got onto Google, measured the distance. It was actually 330 feet to the front door of one of the residences. And I was able to mm -hmm. produce a, um, a lumen map where within the third, you know, based on 10,000 nit output during the day, where, how much light, the, what is the affected light? And um, I went into this, the, the council chambers, the city of Mississauga, all the council people were there, and I mean, massive big room, and you feel about you feel about this big when you're standing behind a podium saying, "Here's my charts and graphs," you know. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, I, I showed them that you know, um, at 300 feet from the display, you're only going to get uh, 92 lux on the ground, and oh, by the way, the street lamps that are on the residents' property that light up your road they provide 100 lux in the ground so basically your street lamps are more of a nuisance to than my sign is and that's at ten thousand nits during the day not at night and they all kind of looked at each other and went and of course i had all the, the backing material behind it and they all kind of looked at each other and, really 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 and i <laughs> we got it approved and it was just that easy because the thing is I'm going to take you back to when you were all children and you're standing behind me across the lake and you all had your flashlights well, mm -hmm. if I'm looking for Matt with a flashlight, the light is not strong enough to cross the lake, yet Matt can see me, but I can't see him because I can't shine on him. The light is just not there. The, the, the power, the knit output is not there. But Matt, Matt can see me, the little white dot moving around at night. And that is the explanation I used, and they got it. They understood huh. it. So they said, well, so the residents, yes, the residents will see the display but it will not change the color of their bedrooms. Yeah. That, that's for sure. Interesting. Interesting. You know, so that's, that's, that's how we won that particular project. And that's how I teach it. I love I it. I want to take, I want to take that and I want to lead into something. Uh, Joe and I are both into sales. I'm, uh, I'm relatively new at it. So uh, I'm learning by the week that there's newer techniques or different techniques that I should be using. And one thing that's come up over and over and over and over again, and I'm seeing the benefits from it is the use of photography, photos and visual aid to either show a customer or uh, even sometimes to shed light on uh, somebody inside the shop, whether they need more uh, advice or know how, how to fabricate something or manufacture something, the use of photos. Uh, for two people that are in sales, um, where do you see the use of photos? How do you implement using photos into your everyday life? And, and what has it done for you? Well, Matt. <laughs> 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 I, 
I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> uh, I was waiting for that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been a photog- amateur photographer for about 30 years, and uh, yeah. uh, I, but I'm not a photographer because I like to take pictures. Being a mechanical engineer, I got a camera, and I took it apart to see how this thing worked. How did light go through the lens? How did the lens mirror move up? And how did that shutter open? And that freaked me. I sat for hours pressing the button, watching that thing go up. Those are the Rain Man moments, okay? Mother would walk by my room and go, What are you doing, son? Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking <laughs> at the camera doing this, you know? So, I mean, <laughs> but, uh, but, but seriously, um, that put aside, I think that photography in the sign industry is so important. And of course, this is the photo of the year for me right now, because I happen to take this one. Um, and I got, oh, God. Uh, I never done a sports, uh, photo opportunity in my life. And here it is. We got Matt Lavery in goals, eyeing down a puck coming at him at about a hundred miles an hour. And when I got this shot, I knew I had the shot of shots. And, uh, I think that is NHL worthy right there. Uh, of course, that's my own photo. But uh, I, you know, <laughs> one of the things I, I'd like you to—I'd like to bring up the photo of uh, Montreal uh, pre, um, Premier Outlets Montreal. This yes. one right here, yes. okay. awesome, awesome picture. This uh, this was done for a company called Twilight Signs in uh, yep. Bolton, Ontario. Mm-hmm. They had done, they created this sign. They built this sign and. Uh, I said to him, hey, you know what? It's just north of Montreal. I'll go take the picture and so on and so forth. And so this was done the 27th of November at 9 o'clock at night. Uh, and people say, well, you, did you photo stop the, the, the star effect in there? No, I didn't. That's all natural. That That it's just an wow. occurrence of how that works. It's so cool. This appeared on uh, Sign Media, Sign of the Times, and Sign Builder front covers. It's and beautiful. I, I, you know, when you, when you sell, <clears throat> when you're selling – a sign in the industry. What do you have? Are you going to tell your customer, hey, drive down that street and then fly yeah. to Tulsa and then go to Florida and then go. You've got you've got a package. And that mm-hmm. package is your photos. And you and, and don't be showing them on this thing. Okay. Do not be showing photos on this. Print them out. Make them large. Show the detail. Hire a professional to to take the pictures. You can see the de- that's taken at night. You can see the <clears> detail <throat> of that particular shot. You can see the glow. You can see the lights behind it. You can see how that thing stands out. You can see the color red of the flowers that are put in front of it. Yeah, an iPhone can't capture that. That sh- that so, was twenty seven second exposure. So to- Robert, what you're telling me is. If if we take photos with an iPhone and print them out on the HP printer at the shop and put the thumbtack through it on the wall, that's not the right way to do it. Uh, you can, <laughs> you can. <laughs> okay, uh, that was a that was a loaded question. I can't tell you how many shops I've went into where yeah. there is this dull. Just like your regular printer yeah, that prints yeah. out documents, and people have taken horrible photos to begin yeah, with. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're putting oh, it yeah. through on on on, on staple <clears throat> paper. You know, they're running it. Yeah, they're printing color on staples paper. That you go to a real printer, get them done, get them get them made. Uh, I'd like to bring up the uh, the big storm. Well, while, while we're trying to find that photo, Rob. Uh, now, let's say I were to use that information. Do I look less credible? If I am taking pictures off my phone and printing them out, or are you saying that if you are going to implement that into your sales pitch, that you need to invest in a better camera? Oh, because it is something that I want to do. And so that, that's a debate. As a salesman, should it be on me to invest into a camera, seeing that if I do have a portfolio, it might do better for me? That that's that's an excellent question, uh, and there's a lot of debate around that. And I just I had I had a wonderful conversation with a friend of mine, Chad, uh, about this because he was he would call me and said, "I need to take better pictures. What do I do?" Mm-hmm. Um, you need to yes and no. You don't necessarily need to go to a better camera. You can buy something secondhand off of Kijiji or or marketplace or whatever. Okay. What you need to understand is the techniques of taking a picture. You saw those Montreal premium. Yeah. That's yeah. on a tripod for 27 mm-hmm. seconds. Yeah. So you need to learn some of the, the basics of photography to 
capture the best. And one of the things about, you know, the Montreal Premium Outlets, it's great. It was not an LED display. And a lot of my stuff, which you'll see here, the, uh, the Lazy Boy that's going to come up, it's an LED display. Well, if you're taking a picture <clears> of that <throat> with your iPhone, you're going to get the scan lines. You're going to get the refresh. And it looks like, awful. Our, yeah. Our, mm -hmm. our refresh rates are 38, 40. You won't catch the, you, Yeah. Bull. Bull. <laughs> and I'll say it again. Bull. Okay. Bull. Yeah. So what I do is I go the other way. I go to long exposure. I put my camera on a tripod and I go long exposure. And that way for the eight seconds that that image is up there, it's burning into the sensor. And you mm -hmm. never see a scan line on any of my photos. There, are, I mean, there's a pile of photos that that, that I've done where just they're just taken like that to do it. But if I'm doing a true professional shot for a sign shop, you yeah. know, whether, whether it be for Yorston or for for Spectra or whoever, uh, you need to really understand the basics of photography. I wrote an article which appeared in Sign Media, which I'll send to you guys if you're interested in on yeah, how to me. take proper pictures. Um, and I, I'll teach a course. I'm, I'm going into um, access signs. Take a look at this one here. This is this is in Edmonton. That display is 19 feet high by 35 feet wide. Um, and that's a wow. digital board. That's a digital board. Yeah, it look how like clear that image is. Beautiful. Yeah, it looks like a TV. And here's the other kicker. That's 16 millimeter. Love it. That's a 16 millimeter mm. digital display. Don't tell me you need to go to a 10 millimeter on that. Okay. You don't, you don't need to go to eight, but look at the clarity of that particular display. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and you can tell I took it during the evening time. Uh, there's no visual pollution. It stands out. It's the, it's the one and only, and you know, that captures the eye when you can show the customer the detail that's in that customers want to see that they want to see yeah. the details. They want to see something that looks good. If you're proud of your images, if you're proud of your signs, then be proud of your images because that's what you're showing your customer. That's that's wise. That's wise. So, uh, so Robert, yeah. for those of us that uh, wouldn't uh, either invest in the gear or the time to learn it better, what what do you think is the best that somebody could do achieving a photo with a commonplace iPhone? Of course, you could then print it after the fact, right? W what would be your best recommendation for someone to do that? Get a tripod. Get a tripod. Okay. Put this thing on a tripod. Learn how to use the long exposure. All Learn right. how to use, uh, you know, get Lightroom for it. There's an application called Lightroom. Uh, okay. And set it. You, I, my camera, the one that you're looking through at me through right now, is sitting on a tripod. The tripod is this big. It's a travel tripod that I use, and it's sitting right here on my desk. But I'll use that on when I'm traveling across Canada in the States, and I'll just put you know, I'll adapt my iPhone if I have to, but mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not going to take, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take pictures with this thing. It's going to be jittery because you need to leave that thing on long exposure. And that's the trick. Okay. Wonderful. The try as soon as you get a tripod, you 50, 50% 50 become a better photographer. Yeah. Love it. Good yeah. advice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here's the, here's oh, another look at one. that, eh? Yeah, I went back. Uh, I, went back um, I had supper and then went back in, in the evening when it was dark, and I decided to get this shot. And you can see that nice neon glow down the uh, down the actual mm -hmm. sign. And this one, this sign won best in show um, in 2016, 2015, at the Canadian Science Show Awards. Uh, the Montreal. No way. Let's yeah. The Montreal Premier Outlet one that you saw won in 2017. I've, I won three years. My photos won three years in a row. Okay. Because a judge will base cool. on the look of the photo. Of the photo. A hundred percent. I and do yeah. judging for some of the awards and I will be You're totally cool. honest with you. Quality of a photo. It's just going to make your sign look that much better. That's yeah. right. And if, you know, Brian, if you mm -hmm. know the CBC one, um, and I'll yeah, just radio? show this one. This one here is the CBC. I was commissioned to do it. And uh, I, I took this picture just recently. This is one of my last ones that I did. CBC is right. There's Ooh, I like that. I like that's that. Big, that's big storm right there. That's, that's cool. cool. That's a cool pylon too, eh? Yeah. Yeah. A little that, lighthouse. That one made the cover of um, uh, Sign Builder, Sign Media. But also the nice thing is it was built by Allen Industries. The whole pylon okay. was built by Allen Industries. So I took this, made a huge resolution photo of it, 
and sent it to Allen Industries, and it's hanging on their wall. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And again, that digital board is crystal clear in that photo. Yeah. There's yeah. no lines. There's no blurry. There's no lines, no nothing. You know, no, it looks like the clearest thing on the photo is the board. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Exactly. So, so and this, that's that's part of it. Go ahead. This this photo makes it the appropriate time to do trivia. Matt, oh, did you bring a trivia no. question? I kind of have a trivia question. You know what, Joe? I uh, I didn't do a lot of research for uh, the end of season one, but I did want to challenge you oh, in particular. God. Dang on it. your knowledge of certain things. So oh, God. Robert Blythe is a legacy member. So he might actually <laughs> have he might actually have the answers to both of these questions. But oh, uh, I was gonna keep it really simple. I wanted to tie in Spectra and I wanted to tie in Yorston Associates for oh, our no. ending of season one. Okay. So uh Robert, this is something that we started a, a few episodes uh, ago where we wanted to start challenging people with trivia questions. Uh, oh, it's a quick quiz. This isn't meant to stump anybody really bad. If you don't get the answer, it's okay. Uh, we've yet to mail any prizes out uh, for the one person that did win. Uh, but a prize is coming uh, sometime soon. Are you both ready for this? Oh, I think so. No. <laughs> hey, show me your hands. Nobody's Googling. Show me your hands. In what year were both Yorston Associates and Spectra Signs established? Oh, oh, Joe, you might lose your job. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, Joe, back on screen. Get back on screen, Joe. Spectra Get back on was, screen. Spectra yeah. was started by Ascensi's father. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm going to say probably night. Uh, 1996, 98. One of those okay. two years. Wow, that's close. And then your guess for Yorston? Uh, that one's going to be a little tougher. I'm thinking probably earlier for Yorston, probably yeah. about 1985 to 87. Wow, wow. <laughs> Joe. I did my what homework. are your guesses? What are your guesses, Joe? And stop looking down. Oh. I don't have a single guess for Spectre. I, I'm clueless. So okay. you you said 96 to 98. Uh, so I'll say 97 uh, on that okay. one. Uh, yeah, copy right in cat. between. <laughs> I'll, I'll, hey, you didn't say 97. I know you Technically can respect he didn't. that. Technically, yeah, he didn't. There to there. <laughs> um, I'm going to say... Well, if if you if you did three years, I'm gonna say you're still in eighty nine to ninety one. Are you both ready? Yeah. No. <laughs> so, Spectra Signs was established in June of nineteen ninety two. Uh, oh, yeah. So recently, we had done our twenty five year anniversary, wow. um, and that was yes by Rob Senior uh, Rob Ashenzi who started that uh, with his brother back in the day. And from my research on Yorston Associates, it was established in 1985, which oh. makes Robert Blythe our 50% winner because he got one of two. There you go. Thank you so much. You know, being old, eh? <laughs> being old, eh? You Legacy. Know? Legacy, you know, man. legacy, legacy members, no answers like that, eh? I'm getting you discounts know? at my local food chain now. So, you know, that's all good. <laughs> it's Shopper's Drug Mart? Yeah. Shopper's Drug Mart, they do that. Yeah, Old Folk Tuesday oh or something God. like that. But you know what? Oh it's God. all good. It's all good. Hey, Brian, I'm going to ask you to Google um, Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon album cover. Because uh -oh. my tr my trivia question is coming up. Google that uh, uh, Trivia back Come to on. it. Joe, you should yeah. be good at this. I have a little bit of Pink Floyd Robert, knowledge. I'm not going to lie. How are you this prepared, Robert? I, I, I love Come him. on. I love him. You're showing us up. This is unbelievable. That's Rob. Uh, you got to yeah. know Rob. He just comes with it. If you're going to invite him to something, <laughs> expect him to be all, right. all in. All, all in. right. Uh, and, you know, uh, well, my um, my trivia question has absolutely nothing to do with Pink Floyd. 
Mm, okay. There's signage involved in it for sure. There is signage involved with it. There's okay. signage involved for sure. So, so, uh, so I know Brian's googling that, finding an image of it. But um, uh, if I have a red, a white, a red, a white, and a blue LED, let's go to inline. Let's go to SMD. Doesn't matter. A red, a white, and a blue LED. I have three LEDs, and they're on a black okay. background. How do I get white light? Um, boy, this is a lot of dead air. <laughs> wow. I I went ahead to Google uh, dark side of the moon cover real quick in case you um, change all the pixels to white. No, you can't. But you have you, a red have, LED, a blue LED, a red? And a green LED. How do you get white? Oh, white? and a green. Oh, you said a red, white, and blue. Uh, a red, sorry, a red, green, red, yeah, and a blue. Yeah, yeah, red, red, um, red. Yeah. Oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. So you mix you all the white? colors together. Pretty close. But as you walk up to the display, and you've all we've all walked up to uh, to, to displays, and we've seen individual colors, and we see pixelization. Mm -hmm. So the answer is, and I'm taking you back to grade five physics here. If I take a white light and I put it into a prism, I get the full spectrum of LED uh, of color out mm -hmm. of that spec the uh, prism, which is the rainbow effect. Well, there's opposite and inverse law to that that says that if I take the three primary colors, uh, the 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 red, the blue, and the green LEDs on a black background, and I put them into a prism, I should see white light. If I'm pulsing them at the, if I'm, you know, a phase clipping the LED at the proper levels, I should see white light. Now I'm going to go all rain man on you guys. All right. <clears throat> white light will only exist when there is a prism involved. Where is that prism? Wow. The prism is between your eyeball and the display. And as light travels in a sine wave from the LED, it starts to converse with both the other colors. And what we perceive is white light because of the molecules of oxygen in the air. Wow. 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 Now, if you go to a party, don't use that one. The women will <laughs> run. Okay, I'm telling you, they'll just they'll, they'll evaporate. Okay, <laughs> don't use Who's that this one. guy. Who's this guy with the light knowledge? Eh? Hey. Go get a drink, bud. I'm wearing oh, a beard geez. because I've been slapped too many times. Okay, <laughs> there you go. I like it. Thanks, Brian. But uh, yeah, oh, so that's uh, that's part of what I teach, and that's why the how and why of pixelization. And so that's incredible. When, when you talk about going to 10 millimeter, you talk about going to eight. That that lazy boy is a 16, and we get white light and we get all detail. So wow, that you know, there you go. I'm just bored half of the people to death here. There's no, still no, it's, it's you knowledge. didn't bore me. You didn't no. bore me. I I appreciate Perfect. that kind of thing. So I think our, our uh, we should have a closing subject. One of the topics you had mentioned wanting to cover is uh, where signage is going, uh, yeah. and you have a specific note that. The future of signage is not channel letters. So, give us your your uh, nugget of wisdom on this. I, I think the I think Mother Nature hit the reset button with coronavirus here, and uh, we're all realizing that uh, uh, retail is taking a hit, and the smart centers that we all built in the 1990s um, are not no longer the way of doing business. I think the way of doing business is content based. Uh, I think that where you know channel letters and sign and traditional signage that'll always be there. Uh, the 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 big storm uh, lighthouse that you saw for the the brewing company in Tampa Bay, that will be those projects will always be there. But if you noticed, there's content now being on that sign. Mm -hmm. The sign is holding up, um, and so. Yeah, you, you can see that this is this is now happening. Is that we're combining signage with content? We're we're creating experience now. There's a there's a, a mall in Toronto, which is a phenomenal mall called the Sherway Gardens, and they sell. Mm -hmm. um, there's a company in there called Canada Goose, and they make the greatest down jackets. They they're Arctic and Antarctic proven. 
Okay. They're technical jackets and, and they sell for like thousands of dollars, oh, yeah. winter coat and so on and so forth. You go into this store. It's the first time you ever, I've ever been to a store where there's a lineup to get into the store and there's no stock. There is one of every color, one of every size. And you try that on and you go into a room that's minus 30 degrees Celsius, almost minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, cool. um, and you stand there. And of course you freeze because we're all wearing shorts in the summertime and flip-flops, but your body's warm because you got this coat on. Mm -hmm. And hey, I like this color. I like that coat. I like that size. Great. MasterCard. They ship it to you the next day. It, you know, there's one single warehouse. There's no movement of stock. There's no, you know, we're using uh, Canada Post or, or U U.S. Postal Service to send product now. But mm -hmm. you're gaining the experience of what, what it's like to wear this type of jacket. And as you walk in, there are TVs on the floor. And as you're, as you're walking on the floor, the ice is cracking below you. You're hearing this. Your senses are being stimulated mm -hmm. all over. You're getting wrapped up. <clears throat> That's signage now. That's what signage yeah. is. You know, that's phenomenal stuff. Yeah. An interactive experience is what you're saying. Providing the customer yeah. with interactive experience rather than just pictures or signs everywhere. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So that's, that's, that, and that's where it's going. And we got to be ready for it because I think companies like Moment Factory, which are doing phenomenal things, the Cirque du Soleil, uh, mm -hmm. it's all digital. They have, massive input to the signage industry now because we're creating that experience and we as signed companies you and i as signed companies who build channel letters who build structures who build you know montreal premium outlets who build big storm lighthouses we all have the ability to do that but now we have to provide content to our customers now we have to, and if you can if you can consult your customer on the type of display to buy if you can create that display if you can manage and create content for that display and if you can get involved with that company every month on their marketing program there you're talking to signage companies sell channel letters they put them up on the wall and they walk away yeah can you imagine if you were talking you're both in sales can you imagine if you were talking to your customer every month for five years about what their plans are for the content and you were creating that content for them yeah. and the next time they need a digital display who are they going to call yeah. you guys interesting well interesting. I, I guess um the possibly unanswerable question is when when do we see the traditional electrical sign company becoming fully aware of this. So in, in the past I've sold, um, I, well, let's, I've been selling digital signage seven years now. <clears throat> and the feedback that I get from the most part is it's not, it's not our core competency. Technically yeah. we don't have the ability. We don't. And then you tell them, Hey, listen, I, I can help you out. We can help you create and manage content. Listen, just offer the opportunity. Just and offer I can tell. Yeah. So yeah. few sign companies have been going after digital signage in the format that you're discussing right now. We're seeing yeah. AV integrators yeah. doing this. Yes, Completely exactly. AV, AV is huge in the in the digital signage market now because they've they've had access to the information. They've had access to the product. We um here trivia question for you guys uh -huh. where was the first quartz watch made oh i have no clue i i Switz I'm switzerland the you didn't give me a chance to answer <laughs> i was gonna the say whole... switzerland well there you go you win i'll mail you i'll mail you your prize when i get mine okay yeah. uh, but, but the home of the quartz watch 90% of the watches coming to the world were made in Switzerland in the 60s and, and, and because they were all mechanical. You wind them up in springs and so on and so forth. And they invented the quartz watch, but the industry in Switzerland said, no, we don't, no, that's not, that's not watches. So Japan picked it up and started making it. Well, guess where 90% of the world's watches come from now? Japan. Japan. Exactly. So we as a signage industry are refusing to say because, oh, we don't have the competency. We don't understand it. We don't know what to sell to that customer. That's why there's guys like me that exist. You know, I, I teach this information and we need to attack it. We need to, we need to bring it to us. And, and once we get that, then so, 
you're right. But here, here where, um, and you know, Matt and I've talked about this before. I don't think that's the core issue. I don't think our core issue is this one moment in time where we're not adopting an applicable technology. I think it, the core issue is that not only, um, do, do most of the industry not respond to change in market trends, they are deeply entrenched with the history of their business. Yeah. And more often than not, when I go see a customer, the most common phrase whenever I'm trying to help them change one of their processes for the better, because that's the only way that I sell product, is helping them do what they do better. That's right. The response I'll get from the one that is viewed with the most wisdom in the shop is if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix it. it. Oh God. This is the I way my daddy that person. This is the way my daddy did it. This yeah. is the way my grandpappy did it. And yeah. that that's how we built this business. Mm. And you know, I've showed an illustration on it before, but you know what? My favorite thing is like, listen, the horse and buggy wasn't broke, right? But yeah. we're sure glad Henry Ford invented the Model T, right? And that's nobody right. in their right mind is choosing the horse and buggy as the optimal transportation over the autom- automobile, right? But if we just ignored it and said, listen, the horse and buggy ain't broke. It's still not broke. Don't yeah. fix it. And and that's I think that's the core issue. They, for whatever reason, there is this deep historical connection to where we started and how it was done. And this is because – The source of information is not coming from the outside in. Mm -hmm. It's stuck inside. That's right. Everyone is convinced that we have the right method. They're so protective. It's amazing how many times you walk into a sign shop. They're like, sign this NDA. And it's like, listen, if anything, I'm going to teach you guys something. I'm not taking something away from what you're doing in this process. uh, uh, You're doing different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. You're bringing value. You're not just answering the catalog and saying, this is the number you need to order, okay? Yeah. You're bringing value. And I've closed I've closed way too many sales for customers, helping them just by, you know, the salesman shows up and says, I don't know anything about LED displays, but I got a big brother right here. This guy's yeah. going to teach you everything you need to know. And so I walk in as an engineer, which is very um, non-aggressive, mm-hmm. and I just explain and and show and teach and then the salesman picks up the order we close it we're always closing but salesman picks up the order and that's the best thing that's the way to help you know inform and educate if they go a long way yes exactly and especially in what we do which kind of leads me to one last thing because um uh it's something i i feel strongly about i know joe and i know you do and i want to use this platform number one to thank you and number two i want you to touch into uh your position on where you stand on mentorship within the industry uh as we both know uh there's been a lot of movement with the IAC elite program uh with ypn in canada and this uh resurgent of these young professionals that are in our industry uh all across north america and i wanted to know your opinion of where you fall into that category because i know for a fact that you've done a lot of mentoring for me and for other other young professionals so uh Again, where do you stand on that? Well, well, thank you, Matt. I, I appreciate that. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm humbled. I'm touched. Um, many, many, many years ago in my life, I, I had the opportunity to meet many older gentlemen. I'm going to say gentlemen because there's about five of them, and I can name them all. Um, and, and they've all spent the time talking to me and teaching me certain things because I was open to it. And one of the most influential people in there was my dad, my very own, my very own father, who is uh, who would have been a hundred years old, um, recently passed away seven years ago. So, uh, just uh, an amazing man, uh, an amazing mentor. Never got mad at me, but always gave me the psychological approach. You know, you can do this, but these will be the consequences and. And he, he, he really, he influenced me greatly to that. And I, when I got into the sign industry, I was probably 35, I guess now, 20 years. So 55, yeah, 20. And I, I wish that I'd had someone in the sign industry guide me better, help me find my path. And I vowed that 
because of these great men in my past life, who I still refer to, who still are part of my life, and one of them is Keith Edwards, who you know we all know here. Yeah. Um, uh, if if I had the opportunity to do that. And it's a natural process. It's not something you can force. It's not something you can say, I'm going to teach, I'm going to mentor you. You're going to be my, you know, protege. You, can't, you, you have can't no choice. That, you know, you have no choice. It's a natural process. It starts yeah. with uh, a young man named Domenico DiNardo at Dactronics who walked into my office and said, um, they want me to be in sales. I was on the shop floor. What do you, can you teach me everything about sales? And for nine months, every Tuesday, we would spend a half hour to an hour in the boardroom talking about the sales process, mm-hmm. talking about the, the, the discovery fulfillment, talking about the, the, the number of times we visit a customer, talking about the, you know, the follow-ups. And, and Domenico DiNardo is one of the greatest LED salesmen in Canada now because of it. And he's 10 years my junior. And that was the starting point to me really helping and working with younger. And I think the, uh, I got a chance to, to work with you, Matt. I got a chance to work with Lee directly. Uh, it's something I'm going to value and cherish now because it's got value to it. There is no replacement for, for mentorship, especially if you get a good mentor, you know, um, and you can tell there's a connection. There's, yeah. a, there's, there's an emotion which is attached to a mentor mm-hmm. that you can't find anywhere else. You can find friendship. You can find love. You can find a whole lot. But, but that mentorship, being proud. I mean, I look at Lee Murphy, and he's like my son. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my stepson is uh, Gabriello. He's 21, 22 years old, six foot three, massive kid. And we just renovated my condo here and put new wood floors in and he listened to everything I said and he asked questions and he came up with ideas and we discussed it and it was mentorship and it just gets us this much closer. I mean, but there's also a love there. I I love my son, you know? Um, And uh, when I see what Lee is accomplishing and and how I, you know, I don't even, I think Lee's given more to me than I've given to Lee. I got to say that it right. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's selfish, but you give to get back, and it mm-hmm. happens, and I don't know why. It's, uh, uh, it's one, one thing I know Joe and I have discussed this in our past, and we discussed it with um, other members, and uh, our industry can be very selfless uh, if you talk to the right people. And I think that always comes from the, the, uh, from the fact that a lot of us, like Joe always says, we fell into the business. Uh, I didn't choose to be in the sign business. Well, I did choose, but it's not something I went to school for. It's not something I was well-versed or educated on. And because we just fall into the industry, you kind of have to rely on the peers um, and the influencers around you in order to get better at what you do. So it's been one of those things that most recently we've been doing it. And, and it shows, um, it shows its worth uh, when you do, uh, talk to these people that have been in the industry for a while. You take some of their knowledge, their experiences. Uh, you use their wisdom. Uh, and and most of the time, like yourself, they're willing to give you that information because it's not in direct competition. It's strictly in the, uh, in, in the teaching. They just want to teach. They want to mentor. And they want to pass off what they knew so that <clears throat> we're better off for it in the industry moving forward. So I think that's why we always refer to you as uh, – as a professor, because a lot of the mentors have taken on that teaching role of, uh, of professing uh, information to us younger people. So I, 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 I'd like to think that that's the truth. And that's yeah. why we do it. It's because, um, like I said, I just want to see success. Success. I agree. There, so. agree. All right. Robert, well, Thank you so much for being wow. on the show. I, I personally have pulled a lot out of it. I'm, I'm really glad that you came on and shared your wisdom. Your passion is clearly visible. I love, I love your technical connection to things, yeah. signage, and your view. Um, I really, really – for those uh, who would want to get in contact with you, how, how should they get in contact with you? Uh, it's easy. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me, um, my email, robert.blythe at me.com. Uh, that's the easiest way. It's a personal email. Uh, and I will, I will help you in any way I can. 
Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn. I try to keep my LinkedIn very much up to date. I, I've started a blog, which uh, now is giving Ooh. me time to uh, do, uh, you know, I'm learning WordPress, um, teaching old dogs new tricks. Uh, <laughs> so I started a blog called Bob's Tech Talk Tuesdays, which uh, really Love discusses uh, the, the technical aspects. And I, I'm doing a lot of reading, a lot of research, and a lot of information <clears throat> to, to, to make them short you know, 500 to 1,000 word uh, technical articles, but that speak to the everyday population. So you can find me on LinkedIn for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I'd love to, I love talking about science. I'm very passionate about it. Maybe you haven't awesome. noticed, but I, yeah. I, haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I like well, Joe. I also want to thank you. Uh, the end of season one, we couldn't have had uh, a more informative guest wow. than you. Uh, absolute wow. pleasure. I love running into you. Uh, it's not going to be our last time. There's going to be many moments like this. Rob, on behalf of me and everybody else, we thoroughly appreciate the amount of work Thank that you. you put into this industry. Oh, uh, it means a lot. Love you to death, brother. Thank you so much. That's 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 that's. I I, I have no and words. That's it. And thank you. Well, we, don't get teary eyed. We thank you for being on. Positive show right here. Sincerely, it was great. But Robert, thanks yeah. so much for being on. Have a great uh, day and a safe weekend. All right. Thank you, sir. Professor Blythe, eh? Professor Blythe in the building, eh? Uh, I feel like was, I just went to school, eh? That was great, man. I, you know what? I, I hope, I hope to spend some more time with Robert. I, you know, I'm, I, I see a lot. I, well, I guess he's older. I see a lot of him in me. Uh, I feel I feel connected as far as how our brains are wired and uh, yeah. how he thinks and how he approaches things. So I, I really, really love that. Um, love all right, that. everybody. That was hey, episode Joe, 12. What? Joe, I just wanted to say, brother, uh, season one, I've absolutely thoroughly enjoyed doing with this with you every Friday morning. I've learned a lot about you. Uh, I've learned a lot about the crew. Uh, I think this has been unbelievable for season one and I'm looking forward to a seasons two. So I wanted to personally thank you too, because I know you put a lot of hard work into this. So get out of here. Guy. I love you. I love Listen, you, Matt. I love you too. I, I appreciate <laughs> your dedication, your energy. Uh, no one's ever going to top your introductions, my friend. So, uh, I, I really appreciate, um, what you put into all of that. So, uh, you know, for Rise and Signs, this is the close of season one. Um, listen, everybody, we, we, we haven't had anybody talking to me trash yet. So nope. uh, if, you, if you like us, keep subscribing. But if you want to talk some trash, we'll take whatever comments you, you'll give us. Mission. So if you, if you want to hit the buttons below and, and, and say some stuff, we, we'd love to hear some feedback. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to be planning a season two. You know, do you want to be on? Is there somebody you want to see on? Uh, is there topics you want us to cover? So uh, give us give us some tools. We'll put them to work. Uh, Matt, thank you as always. This is Love Rise and Signs. Everyone have a great Friday morning. Have a fantastic Friday. <laughs>